Welcome back to the Kennedy Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Allison, and today I am joined once again by my buddy old pal, Ryan Pryor. Wah, 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 wah. Hello. Hey, hey, everybody. It's been a long time. It's been two months. Can you believe it's been two months? No, it hasn't. Two, two months? months to the day, tomorrow. It's since Are you we serious? recorded cocktails and clammy chowder. Yeah. Two that was months. a good time. That was a great day. Thank you. That was fun. We had a good time that night. That was a we that did was a have fun a good night. Time. That was a lot it of fun. Was. I, think I it was, got COVID I mean, the next day. But yeah. Or no, two days and later. And you got COVID the next day. And I was like, for like three days, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna I'm getting co I I've gotten COVID and I just don't know it. I have Schrodinger's COVID. Yeah. And I I, I Schrodinger's COVID. <laughs> and <laughs> so that, I that would be the title of this episode if I did it like that. <laughs> Schrodinger's COVID. And I every day I went to work and I wore a mask because I, I teach at a school. So I was like, I don't want to get anybody infected, even though like, you know, I'm pretty over the mask thing at this point. Finally, on like day three, I said, Caroline, why don't you test? Cause she had a we had a, some we had some rapid tests at home and she was like, she tested negative, and I was like, okay. But like, you know, like you know how like if you think you're gonna be sick, every time you notice a oh, symptom. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's it. This is it. So like, totally. I would have like a headache, and I'm like, oh, there's the COVID. That's it's gotten me. I'm done. I felt, I felt so bad. What happened was for the audience, me and Jeffrey came back from Europe. We landed, literally took a COVID test the next day. Everyone we knew that came back from Europe was getting COVID. We were so careful while we were there. We did all the things, and we tested negative when we landed. So we were the next day. So we were thrilled. We were like high five and ready to go because then we had the show with y'all the next day and I of course told all of you like I tested negative totally understand if you know we just got off the airplane if you're uncomfortable blah 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 and y'all were like no we're good you know obviously that's just how the world operates now so we were good we felt great and then everything went well and then I think it was the day after that night we went to bed and I was like something is wrong <laughs> we weren't for sure yet and then we tested the next morning and I texted everybody that was involved and felt like garbage the fact that I had put you all there well, but I did test before you just can't predict it oh, whatever no. it was we sat we had breakfast with you for two hours that morning sat right across from you and you know you know Allison Allison's not quiet so like she was you no. know just she was the ma- like all the particles were in the air just and we didn't spitting. Just, just spitting, spitting over COVID, <laughs> and um, my huevos rancheros did not get COVID, and neither did I. So, praise you know, be. who knows? Praise yeah. be, praise be to he. You know, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it worked out all, all for all for the best, and so much to talk about. And in 1964, the number one thing that people had to argue about was the outcome of the Warren Commission. In fact, That's it right. caused a whole lot of hubbub and mm-hmm. hoopla and rigmarole if you will Mm -hmm. uh three different great word terms uh that we're using today and yeah no it was actually was it was a big deal um a lot of the information that i got today came from a archived time magazine article from yeah october of 1964 that had was like literally like 30 pages long about just the reaction of this one particular writer to the the warren uh commission's report being released anyway that's awesome uh, before you know. we get started, though, I do want to say I have not covered the Warren Commission, and it's not necessarily on purpose. It's just that I actually don't focus a lot on the assassination or things around it. I do an episode here and there about it because obviously it's definitely a big part of the Kennedy family story, but I focus on the family as a whole and their history and don't so much study in or have it to this point studied so much about that. So with the Warren Commission, I haven't covered it yet. This episode will specifically be on the history of the Warren Commission and its findings. And I know this is a very controversial topic, but we're not going to get into all the conspiracy theories and all that kind of stuff. We're solely reporting on yeah, like the, the, the what it was and what they found. So, And the real thing about the Warren Commission is it's 888 pages long. So you could mm-hmm. literally do a whole series. You could do months. You could do a couple months worth of episodes just going through the Warren Commission and looking at their findings and talking to historians about it. And yeah. I actually don't think that would be a bad idea because, you know, It'd be one interesting. Of the things- I actually uh, downloaded the audiobook of yeah. the Warren Commission and it's like 35 hours or something. And, and so, like, I'm wondering if, you know, okay, you're a history podcast. Maybe a part of your thing could be like, hey, there's a lot of conspiracy around this particular report. What if we mm-hmm. 
do- dove into it and really looked at the individual Maybe. things. Maybe. I just don't know? really give my opinions on any of no, the Because I, mean, I, I, I mean have to opinions, dispel. but I, I mean just don't to, give them. I mean to dispel the conspiracies because the vast majority of historians and politicians and those who are familiar with it corroborate what they say. There, there's very little in the way of like plausible conspiratorial things against it. When, when I'm saying that, it's based on evidence. You can believe what you want to believe, right? And, and I think that there's probably arguments out there, and I'm sure at some point Allison will very carefully dip her toe into I think a, I think there's you know, a lot of valid arguments and opinions in all different ways. I, so, I agree. But I haven't studied enough to say. Sure, That's always exactly. my answer is I haven't but to, studied yeah, enough so to say. So we're not, we're not talking about the conspiracy here. We're just talking about the facts, right? Just right. the facts. And this straight is facts. Straight facts. So let's talk. Uh, November 22nd, 1963. JFK was assassinated on Dealey Plaza in his black limousine driving past the Texas Book Depository in Dallas, Texas. It was actually blue, but... Blue, continue. I'm sorry. Blue. Well, that's, <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because I've seen it. It's in person? At, well, so two fun facts about that limousine. And again, like I said, we're not talking about the assassination today. But one, the limousine is currently at, housed at the Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And it is black now. Or at least was I'm it blue? Col- was it like midnight I'm, blue or I'm something? I'm colorblind, so who knows, really, quite frankly. Are you really? I'm red-green colorblind, yeah. So like, you know, I like, know that. I see colors weirdly. I see different colors weirdly, yeah. Uh, but the knew? second thing is, is you may not know this, but they cleaned up the vehicle and used it through yeah, the beginning of the LBJ presidency. And you're like... You really couldn't have just bought a new one. Yeah. But yeah, they, they installed this glass so bubble on top of it to make it more, you know. Interesting other fact, they had that glass bubble available at the day of, and they almost yeah. used it. But obviously, the rain cleared out. So obviously, directly after the assassination of, um, of JFK, right, Lee Harvey Oswald goes out, kills a police officer who questions him about, you know, the murder or the assassination. Side note, sorry. It was Go Midnight ahead. Blue. I don't know how okay. I retain that so well. Okay, okay continue on. Um, kills a police officer, is arrested inside of a movie theater, and then is almost immediately killed by Jack Ruby. And for a lot of people, this is too much of a coincidence, right? This is just all of this fits too perfectly, right? And I'm not going to say that it doesn't. It's like you can't make that up, right? That's hard to make Mm -hmm. up. That would make a good movie if it wasn't true. Obviously, people wanted answers. And so uh, on November 29th, 1963, LBJ signed Executive Order 11130. Okay, uh, and I never know whether executive orders are like the number or you just like say the numbers individually. So I'm just going to say 11130. And Congress then passed the special uh, joint resolution which validated that executive order and so allowed the commission to begin. It would take its name from Chief Justice Earl Warren, who had previously served as the governor of California up until 1953, from 1943 until 1953, until he was selected to become on the Supreme Court. And I was really curious as to why the chief justice of the Supreme Court was chosen for this role. Like, why is it, why does that, like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense. Or just like, it seems like an odd choice. And the only thing I could really find was that it seems that they chose him to give a legitimate public face to the investigation Hmm. so that people would take it seriously. Um, Interesting. If anyone knows better, DM me because I'm I'm interested yeah. in that answer. Why why detail. was the sitting? Or if that's Supreme, the reason? Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like he seems like he's got yeah. other things to do, right? Like the the chief justice of the Supreme Court is is like on this commission that when you sure, when you, but when this I, is a big to do. I mean, this right. the nation needed answers. Sure, but like when you hear about who the other members are, you're like one of these things is not like the other. One of these things is not like the others. So you're anyway, and actually, there's a surprise member of the Warren Commission that I didn't know about, and uh, I'm excited to talk about it. They met for the first time on December the 5th, 1963, on the second floor of the National Archives. On the commission were as follows, okay? Uh, members included Chief Justice Earl Warren, obviously, Richard Russell Jr., a Democratic senator from the great state of Georgia, John Sherman Cooper, a Republican senator from the state of Kentucky, Hale Boggs, a Democratic representative from Louisiana, more specifically New Orleans, the retired former director of the CIA, Alan Dulles, who famously oversaw the 1953 Iranian coup uh, uh, by the the Shah of Iran, which I, I only wanted to point out because I always like to remind people, right? History doesn't repeat itself, it does rhyme, and we learn history so that we can understand the present better. Uh, and right now, what's going on in Iran, right? Massive protests over, you know, basically what is amounts to a religious oligarchy. Uh, and while we won't go into that because that's, you know, not our place and not something we know about, it's just the reason that's happening 70 years later is because the United States helped overthrow 
the democratically elected leader of Iran in 1953 and replaced him with a religious oligarch. Is that fact or like a That is 100% fact. We have wow, I need the to CIA study. The CIA directly oversaw the non-peaceful uh, deposing wow. of the democratically elected leader of Iran and ushered in the last 70 years of religious control of the country. Theocracy. Yeah, my, yeah, Caroline said theocracy, which is true. Which is, again, directly related to women are now taking off their hijabs mm -hmm. and they're protesting, you know, having to be second-class citizens in their own country. So just, again, not commenting on that as a current event, but talking about how this connects yeah. to a guy named Alan Dulles. And then also John J. McCloy, who was the Assistant Secretary of War during World War II, and also a part of this group of, like, learned, uh, educated individuals who lived in Washington who helped sort of help make foreign policy decisions. And then finally, drum roll, but any guesses? A very famous person that you absolutely had no idea was on the Warren Commission? Isn't it Gerald Ford? It was Gerald Ford, yeah. I at didn't the time, know that. Uh, I didn't know you that. You didn't I think I would no, know that. I, no, I didn't. Well, That's there you the go. That's the first time I've ever gotten a question. <laughs> Gerald I'm Ford, amazed. a Republican representative of Michigan who would, six years later, become the president mm -hmm. of the United States himself. So there you go. That's the members of the Warren Commission. And it took them almost 10 months to produce an 888-page report that was presented to Lyndon Baines Johnson on September 24th, 1964. And then three days later, it was presented to the public. And I don't know if you want to put it in here or not, but I found this incredible like three-minute clip of uh, Walter Cronkite announcing the Warren Report having been published. This is a CBS News Extra. November 22nd and the Warren Report. Here is CBS News correspondent Walter Cronkite. November 22nd, President John Fitzgerald Kennedy was shot to death in full view of hundreds of spectators watching him in a Dallas, Texas motorcade. 48 hours later, the man Dallas police said shot the president, Lee Harvey Oswald, was himself killed by Jack Ruby in full view of millions of Americans watching television. This bizarre sequence of double killings raised great questions. Who actually fired the shots that killed Kennedy? Why did Ruby shoot Oswald? Was there a conspiracy? Were right-wingers involved? Was it a Russian plot, a Cuban plot? The new president, Lyndon Johnson, ordered these questions answered. He appointed a commission of seven prominent Americans to investigate the whole affair. He literally drafted Supreme Court Justice Earl Warren as chairman. This committee labored 10 months, took testimony from hundreds of witnesses, then brought forth a document close to a thousand pages. So according to this Time Magazine article that I found, on October 2nd, there were some concerns that the report was actually being delayed. So they were actually really upset that it had taken as long as it had. There was some speculation that it might have been because of the midterms, but it did come out before the midterms. And the person who wrote the article and the public were floored by how detailed the report was when it came out. It was backed by an incredible array of research, uh, which we'll talk about here in a minute, like it had I mean, just an excruciating amount of, of research. Oh, and by the way, the person who wrote this article, I want to make sure I'm giving credit where credit is due. And actually, it doesn't mention it. So whoever you are, if you're still out there and you're listening to Kennedy Dynasty, let us know. There were 13 key findings, um, and of which I'm going to only read three because they're probably the most important. And then I'm also going to reveal to you some of the more interest, other interesting things about it um, that I think I just stood out to me when I read through it. I do want to say, I've personally seen some places and things that they did not check as thoroughly as probably should have been. Sure. Which, I mean, can be expected with something that goes over as quickly as the Warren Commission really did. I mean, it was less than a year. Anyway, I just wanted to say that there are things that people will definitely come into my DMs and be like, but they didn't do that. So of guys, course. I understand it. We're just saying what they reported on. So, this is okay, what they continue. reported. The, uh, you can have, you can, you can have sure. the opinion that you wish. That's fine. I just um, want to continue to reiterate that. <laughs> I understand. I, I get it. I get it. And like I said, we are just reading the facts. So here's what the Warren Commission said. Whether you believe it or not, here's what the Warren Commission said. And I'm reading directly from the commission here. Mm -hmm. The shots which killed President Kennedy and wounded Governor John Connolly were fired by Lee Harvey Oswald. The commission has found no evidence that anyone assisted Oswald in planning or carrying out the assassination. The commission has found no evidence to show that Oswald was employed, persuaded, or encouraged by any foreign government to assassinate Kennedy or that he was an agent of any foreign government. Two... 
No direct or indirect relationship between Lee Harvey Oswald and Jack Ruby has been discovered by the commission, nor has it been able to find any credible evidence that either knew the other. The commission has found no evidence that Jack Ruby acted with any other person in the killing of Lee Harvey Oswald. And then finally, there is no evidence that the extreme views expressed towards President Kennedy by some right-wing groups centered in Dallas or any other general atmosphere of hate or right-wing extremism, which may have existed in the city of Dallas, had any connection with Oswald's actions of November 22. So those are the big three key findings. There were several others, obviously, just, you know, that I think were less important to our discussion of this. Yeah, I would say that's definitely the big three things that people talk about and that I've read about. Some of the other things that I think were interesting from the Warren Commission that I just thought were worth noting. And this is from the article. One, on the assassination. In Fort Worth on the morning of the day he died, JFK and his wife discussed the risks that a president inevitably faces when he makes public appearances. What Kennedy said was mentally recorded by his special assistant, Kenneth O'Donnell, who repeated it to the Warren Commission. And I quote, If anybody really wanted to shoot the president of the United States, it was not a very difficult job. All one had to do was get a high building someday with a telescopic rifle, and there was nothing anybody could do to defend against such an attempt. A few minutes later, after saying this, Kennedy departed for Dallas, which I think is just, you know, sometimes tragic. The, you know, tragic. Yeah. I mean, you speak things into being. I mean, you recognize that it could have been different, right? But it mm-hmm. wasn't. Let's see, some other interesting things. The evidence against Oswald. So the Warren Commission's evidence against Lee Harvey Oswald is overwhelming beyond reasonable or even rational doubt. Oswald's over, and this is, by the way, the opinion of the writer of this article directly after the release of the Warren Commission in 1964. Oswald's November 22nd presence in the Texas School Book Depository Building, both before and until shortly after the assassination, is absolutely authenticated. Moreover, an eyewitness placed Oswald near the killer's sixth floor storeroom a scant three minutes before the fatal shots were fired. In that storeroom, the commission says Oswald's palm print was found on a carton that had been moved to make it a nest for an assassin as he peered out the window. The assassin's view as well. Was Oswald's rifle accurate enough to be able to enable him to squeeze off three shots, of which at least two found their mark in something less than 7.9 seconds? After more than 100 test firings, the FBI experts said that it was. One FBI agent testified that the crosshairs of the telescopic sight were off just enough to enable the assassin to hit his moving target without having to take any lead whatsoever. The commission conclusion was that the various tests showed that the Manlicher Carcano, which is, by the way, the name of the rifle, in case you were interested, it's an Italian rifle um, of German design, Manlicher being the, the German production company and Carcano being the Italian manufacturer. You didn't care, but I love firearms history, so there you go. Um, Was an accurate rifle, and that was the use of a four-power scope was a substantial aid to rapid, accurate firing. Oswald's marine training and marksmanship, his other rifle experience, and his established familiarity with the particular weapon showed he possessed ample capability to commit the assassination. Finally, the commission had in its possession three movie films taken by amateurs of Kennedy's car at the moment of assassination. Using these films as its guide, the commission staged a chilling reenactment of the assassination. Oswald's rifle with scope was pointed out of the sixth floor window. A camera attachment took pictures and complete with crosshairs of a moving car past the street below. So those are kind of the key particulars. That's sort of what the commission found. Like I said, you have to believe that the information they were provided with was sufficient. You don't have to. I mean, you don't have to, I suppose. But, you know, like I said, I mean... There's a lot of people that don't. And I think I I have seen theories that make you could make make sense. I've seen different things. So I think it's up to everybody to kind of decide for themselves. I will say that The Death of a President by William Manchester is a really incredible book just about the entire time and everything that happened. I mean, so extremely detailed. It's unreal. And there's people in there and accounts and interviews and all these kinds of things just back to back to back of people being like, that wasn't what happened or that wasn't founded or this wasn't. But then this person said this to the Warren Commission, but it was just, you know, different people saying different things. So if anyone's looking for a good book to read about this time and this horrible event, then that's a really good one for detailed accounts and firsthand interviews and things. But yeah, as far as my opinions on things, I never give them. <laughs> but I am glad to learn about the Warren Commission as a whole. I've never really studied into it much and it makes me want to keep reading and study well, more. I, I really do think going through it and looking at the different parts and exam like that's a that's something that this podcast could very well like I very well do. Um, and not to say do you want to take that on because uh, we, we could bro. we could do it we could do it together <laughs> we could do it together we could sort of like parse it out of the course of, of several months like not all, cool. all at once but say like let's look at Warren Commission part one let's read through it and let's let's talk about the evidence there and let's of course talk there's about- still so much redacted though 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, let's talk about that, and let's talk about also like what are like maybe coming up with like what are the counter arguments to this? Like, what, are there are there opposing viewpoints to this, right? And and what that would can be we interesting find from history, right? I think that might be a nice series that we could maybe could talk be a about side doing. series for sure. Yeah, it could be a yeah. side series, um, and maybe just a, a deep so. dive into the Warren Commission because it's eight hundred eighty eight pages. I mean, it's just chock yeah. full of stuff, and I think. I think I'm like an hour into the audio of it. It, yeah. would, it would take so, me forever. So obviously the results of this Warren Commission were, 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 first of all, the Secret Service drastically changed how mm -hmm. it dealt with presidential security. Congress published the testimony and depositions of over 552 witnesses and 3,100 exhibits, uh, pieces of, of whatever, that are currently available on the National Archives. Uh, anyone with a Freedom of Witch Information Request Act uh, through the Freedom of Information, can view these um, these pieces of evidence, if you so choose, although you would have to know the whole story, I suppose. The, the commission has been continuously criticized for leaving out potential game-changing information. Multiple conspiracy theories and cover-up claims have been made, um, mm -hmm. which we are not going into, but that has been something. In fact, after the 1992 film JFK, the Assassination Records Review Board was set up uh, to preserve all documents and discoveries uh, that were made. And it was found that even members of the Warren Commission had some doubts about the, the substantive or basic principles of the Warren Commission's findings. Okay? Mm. I'm just saying that it is verifiable fact. This is not my opinion. You're going to have to make a new soundbite for that. This is it is clear that you very much believe every single finding of the Warren Commission. Is okay, that true? that's not true. Would you say that? I, I wouldn't say that's true because I, I, oh, okay. I don't believe anything unless I see it for myself. The beautiful thing about being a historian or teaching history and learning history is that if a new book comes out in 10 years about a subject that I know about and it says, hey, by the way, everything you knew about this was wrong and because we found new evidence, I would go, oh, shoot, everything I knew about that was wrong. <laughs> Like, you're so, not opposed to changing your opinion. That's a part of being a growth and being a human Well, it's being, a part so. of being an adult. A real, like a, a, but also, you can't be in academia and not do that, right? The, right? the idea of academia is you let the facts take you to your conclusion, and you use sure. the facts to make your argument, as opposed to what regular people do, which is make an opinion and then find facts to corroborate that. I think that's a very important thing of communication in general, too, is to never be so prideful that you can't say that you are wrong or yeah. change your opinion on things. And so, if Gerald Ford didn't love everything about the commission, and, and maybe thought some things were off, then you know what? Who am I to say that it isn't? Um, uh, well, Caroline says, well, he pardoned Nixon. So, you know, who knows how he, who knows, who knows, who knows? Um, I need Gerald like a, a board to put sound effects in so bad. Uh, yes, you need to, uh, like I won't, can we, I, I have one that's my, like, my, my opinion, but like, can I get one now that's like, this is just the facts. I kind of like that. You got it. It's going to be a, like a news, like, do, 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 do. <laughs> then yeah. it'll be like, this is just, just the facts. The fa this is just the facts. <laughs> I, but also, can you include... Meh, meh, meh. This is just the facts. Meh, meh, meh. Three other investigations, okay, were done subsequently after the Warren investigation. In 1968, a panel under the uh, Attorney General Ramsey Clark. 1975, the Rockefeller Commission. In 1979, the House Select Committee on Assassinations, in which all of them corroborated the basic principles of the Warren Report. Yeah, if something comes out next week... And uh, a never before seen piece of footage that's like, no, like this didn't happen the way that the Warren Commission said, then I would change my mind. Um, that's interesting. But to my knowledge, the most, the, the largest amount of scholarly work that's ever been done on this assassination was the 888 pages directly after the assassination. And to my knowledge, that is what I'm going to follow until new information becomes available. If people ask me, do you believe the Warren Commission's findings or do you believe conspiracy theories, whatnot? I always answer, I have not studied enough about this subject yeah. to know. There are people that not have dedicated have, years do, yeah. and years and years to study this, so I do not have enough information to make an educated answer on that. Um, yeah. My goal is to continue learning about the Kennedy family's history and general and stuff, and that's just not necessarily where I focus all my energy, but eventually it would be interesting to dive into. You're such. This is what's great about you, Allison, is that you admit these things because a lot of people don't, and this is a good thing about you. And this oh, is why I, I think to. you're. I mean, because it's true. Yeah. I think your listeners appreciate about you. Here's. I think we should get you a, a soundbite too, and um, I think it should be this. Ready? Okay. Uh, it should be like a like a clicking sound, like a like almost like a like a digital like do 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 do. Like mine, if mine's a typewriter. Yours would be like a do do. We do. both sound like Mario trying to do. Well, this. Yeah, and it's <laughs> yours like, is just like do 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 do. Well, so like, what if it's like I don't know enough. Woo. Let's think of different wording. Hold on. Um, I don't know enough. That's kind of like, I am an idiot. Like, no, that's not that. okay. Um, um, okay, I got you. I got you. Hold on. Um, okay. 
All I can think of is like Yoda things, like research, research that, research that I will. Um, like, uh, <laughs> no, um, no, that's terrible. Um, hold on. How about I will look into it? I will look into it. Oh, I like that. Uh, I will look into it. Do, yeah. it. Do it. Ready? Here we go. Three, I just did two. it. I don't have to do it again. Okay, there you go. The, you don't realize that normally the first time you say your sound bites is the one I use because it's the best. It's so authentic um, and real. Well, there you go. Well, I'm learning all. I'm learning about the how the sausage gets made. But anyway, that's how the Warren Commission sausage Jimmy got made. Jimmy Dean. <laughs> Somehow we always. How does it Jimmy always Dean? come back to Jimmy Dean? Pure pork I don't know, sausage. Iconic. Because he's iconic. Honestly, can we get Jimmy Dean to sponsor us? Like, Can we? Yeah. First of all, yes. I gladly accept. Second of all, can we do mm. a separate podcast series not on the Warren Commission, but on Jimmy Dean? I mean, I, sign me up. Taste for yourself why Jimmy Dean is America's favorite sausage. Could it be I'm kind of here for it. Could it be a breakfast podcast where we, like, we talk about... Ooh, unpopular opinion. I don't like breakfast food. I agree. I also think oh, I also think brunch is garbage. Um, brunch is garbage. Give brunch me is garbage. A, a burger. Like I don't want. I'm, it's lunchtime. If this like, this has to go in the and this is going to cause more controversy than the Warren Commission and your and this has to go in the podcast. <laughs> brunch is garbage. I will wait till eleven o'clock to get regular Chick Fil A sandwiches in the morning. One thousand. And I will not. I will not get a. Chi- I'll get a chicken biscuit. I'll eat a chicken biscuit, but I have to. Yes, but, but it's not your preference. You would no, rather have the sandwich. I would rather have the sandwich, and I also think brunch is garbage because here's the deal: what is the what what do you talk? Uh, okay, Caroline also her, her hot take is that chicken minis are trash. But um, my mom thinks that too. You're so wrong. Chicken minis are a delicacy. And I don't know how this how we got from the Warren Commission to brunch, but here we are. The reality is is that eating carbs and sugar and drinking alcohol at eleven at ten thirty in the morning. It's just going to ruin the rest of your day. Like you're sure, just, but you're sitting like, here saying you would rather have the chicken sandwich. See, I would rather have lunch food served at breakfast time. Yeah, sure. I, like yes. I purposely oh, don't no. eat until like noon. Do you know what kills like me is going to a restaurant at like ten, like eleven o'clock on like a Sunday, and then be like, we just serve brunch all day. No, it's like ah. bottomless mimosas. <laughs> I'm like, no, uh, no. I don't. <laughs> give me some whiskey. What uh, do you yeah, mean bottomless I don't, mimosas? Get, can I have a beer? Like, yeah. <laughs> the only exception to my brunch rule is that I do love a Bloody Mary. I do love. Oh, a Bloody I Mary. do love. You have the same. So but it's JFK. because. But why? It's because it's tomato. It's like savory. It's salty. It's, it's, it's salty. Every audience, I can't believe I'm about to reveal this to you all. Reveal. But I was Here thinking about this exact topic today. It's super weird that we're talking about this. So, when my kid, I have one younger kid who's still in Mother's Day out. When I drop her off at whatever time in the morning. And I'm by myself in my car. I have this thing where I love to eat by myself in my car. It's like, I think it's a mom thing. I don't know what it is. It's just a long time. Yeah, it's pretty time classic mom thing. Some some moms like smoke menthols, like, what well, you know, sure, after the, you know, sure. you, you like to eat in your car alone. It's self care. I love to eat in my car alone and listen to trash podcasts. Like, love it. Like, all the gossip yeah, podcasts. I get so, what you. I did, the, so, what I did today, and I felt like a, a garbage truck. I really did, but I do it like once a month, is I don't like breakfast, but I want to go eat in my car once all my kids are out of the house. Sure. So, I went to Sonic this morning and ate a cheeseburger at 9.30 a.m. I Do haven't it. eaten since. And not just because I'm not hungry. Your only, mistake you hungry there, that? Your, only mis- your only mistake there was not getting a chili cheese coney, which is... I, I got chili cheese tots. Ah! <laughs> and a Coke in the morning. Like, Wait, like a regular and, Coke or a diet Coke? No. Okay, Europe turned me on to a Coke Zero with lemon in it. Oh, it yeah, is Coke so Zero is, yeah, bomb. Coke Zero is bomb. But, That's my, I'm a Zoke man myself. Yeah, it's literally, what, 540? I'm still not hungry. <laughs> I haven't eaten since, but that's that's my nastiest character flaw, is that. If that's as bad as it gets, I think you're doing okay. Um, All right. I think you're doing know. okay. Uh, you know, I'm in Enneagram 1, so you know I'm very concerned with this. Yes, thing. yes, I know. <laughs> so, um, okay, well, that's it. That's the Warren Commission and brunch talk. Thank you so much. Good to have you. I'll talk to you guys next week. Come on and vote for Kennedy. Vote for Kennedy. Keep America strong.